Hello and welcome to the Innovation Games here at Sydney Olympic Park, part of National Science Week. I'm your host, Lee Constable, science communicator and science commentator, and you're joining me for a very important event and experiment, gear ratios. To take us through the relationship between gears and acceleration, we've got Carly over at Olympic Boulevard. Let's check it out. Hi, my name's Carly McCulloch and I'm a member of the Australian cycling team. I'm a truck sprint cyclist, which means I ride a truck bike, but today I'm gonna to show you my road bike and talk to you about how gear ratios work. So there are three components to a road cycling bike. You've got the front derailleur and chain rings, the gear shifters, which move the derailleurs, and the cassette with the rear derailleur. Normally on road bikes, you have two front chain rings. I have a 52 teeth chain ring, and a 39 tooth chain ring. These chain rings are powered by this crank here. On the rear wheel, you have the cassette, which has the cogs. I have an 11 speed cassette, which means I have 11 cogs that I can shift through to get different speeds. The rear derailleur changes the cogs on the cassette. On the front of the bike, we have the gear shifters, which you can press with these two buttons here. These operate the derailleurs and allow you to change between gears. When you change gears on your bike, you can see that the chain moves from one cog to the next and that they go down in size. Now, first gear is actually the biggest cog. This is the gear where the chain has to go the furthest distance to go all the way around it. But that can actually help you build momentum to get moving, especially at the start of the race. So, a gear ratio then equals the number of teeth on the front chain ring versus the number of teeth on the rear cog. That then gives you the number of revolutions of the rear tire per one whole pedal stroke. So I actually ride a track bike which actually has no brakes and only one gear, which means that you actually have to pick the gear combination before you go out for a race. Now I'm an accelerator, so I like to go fast on a little gear. That means that my gear combination on the track is usually something like a 5213. Now everybody has strengths and weaknesses, so you might be someone really strong, so you might want a big gear combination, or you could be like me and be really, really powerful. So what do you think your favourite gear ratio could be? Now let's jump into the experiment and see how gear ratios affect acceleration. So to test out the gears, Carly is going to be travelling a distance of 40 metres. First, she's going to be in first gear, then fifth gear, then 11th gear. Ride number one, front chain ring 39, rear cog 28. So as you can see, first gear gets you off to a pretty quick start. Ride number two, front chain ring 39, rear cog 16. a slower start with fifth gear, but fifth gear, being a bit smaller, gave her more ability to accelerate as her run went on. Ride number three, front chain ring 52, rear cog 11. Okay, that was actually the slowest start because we have the smallest cog when it comes to comparing that to our huge cog of first gear. But it did mean that she could really speed up at the end there. So you can imagine in a longer race, that might have made a bigger difference. So let's review the results. Ride one in first gear, Carly hit the halfway mark at 3.01 and got to the end at 6.11. In ride two, in fifth gear, she got to the midway mark at 3.99 and got to the end at 6.01. And on ride three in gear 11, the halfway mark was met at 4.52 and she got to the end at 6.13. 
So overall, Gear 5 was the best bet. If you want to try that experiment for yourself, try with your own bike. And if you don't have gears, you can always compare the difference between a rolling start and a standing start. Good luck.